Don't know if you can hear that in the background, but that's me build going on. Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to this week's Midweek 180. Uh, more garage news very shortly. Uh, but if you've not seen one of these before, this is my midweek update where I bring you my news, views and information about upcoming reviews all filmed in one take. Now, I've had a really busy last week. I was away at the weekend. I was actually due to be away this evening, but thankfully that's actually been moved back a month or two. So that means I'm at home for the rest of the week, which is welcome news because I'm actually away quite a lot in the next couple of weeks. Um, but plenty to talk about and a very exciting announcement to go through this week. But before that, some housekeeping. Last week's leader of the pack was Michael Kemba. Well done, mate. Joined in the Magnificent Seven by Francois G, Paul Mead, Stephen Spink, Kevin DG7 and Witten6475. So whoever puts the first comment this week, you'll be my leader of the pack next week. And the first seven comments will be in my Magnificent Seven. And where are you and what you're doing? Well, that was Jamie P61, who was on an activity holiday in Kielder. Excellent motorsport venue. Keel the Forest used to be the highlight of the RAC rally when I was growing up. Now then, last week's question was about your favourite racing livery. Oh my days, so many brilliant ones that I hadn't thought of at all. The Harrods livery in an F1 GTR. I've actually been in that car. Uh, there's just so many. So uh, you won't need to go back and have a look at the comments from last week. Some brilliant ones. So thank you all for those. Um, uh, uh, JPS livery, forgotten that one. There's so many iconic liveries. Now then, this week's question um, is really inspired by all of the coverage that's currently on the social networks about the Isle of Man TT, which is going on at the moment. And my simple question is, who do you think are the bravest riders or drivers in motorsport? Because I watched the Isle of Man TT and those guys are of a special breed, completely next level, very, very brave, incredibly committed. But what about, I don't know, uh, NASCAR or IndyCar drivers? What about drag racers? What about uh, offshore power boating? I don't know. Uh, have a think. Can you think of a more dangerous or more uh, uh, sport that requires more bravery than the Isle of Man TT? I think it'd be hard pushed. Um, Formula One goes to Canada this week, but the two big bits of news I cannot not talk about is it's just been announced today that uh, Sergio Perez has signed for another two years at Red Bull, which surprises me a lot. That was a hot seat. Um, and I would love to know your thoughts on that one. Bearing in mind he's in clearly the best car on the grid right now. He's only fifth place in the Drivers' Championship. And to be honest, has looked quite ordinary this year. So I am quite surprised. I thought you might see um, Carlos Sainz in there. But apparently Carlos Sainz's dad, Carlos Sainz Sr. and Max Verstappen's dad, Jos Verstappen, don't get on very well. <laughs> I don't know. Craig Slater on Sky thought that might be an issue. Uh, but I'd love to know that one. Very, very surprising. And then um, Esteban Ocon, it's been announced that he will leave Alpine at the end of this year. That doesn't surprise me so much. That driver pairing wasn't working well for Alpine. But it will be interesting to see who takes his place. Um, N24, the Nürburgring 24-hour. I need to talk about that a little bit because I was there watching it. Sadly, it wasn't a 24-hour race. It was about eight hours because the red flag came out around about midnight and uh, there was no more racing until the morning due to heavy fog. Um, word on the ground was that the actual marshals posts couldn't see each other. That's how dense the fog was. It was such a shame because it was really starting to look like up front a very, very, um, uh, you know, really great race between the leading cars. Um, but on the upside, um, uh, I was there supporting Mini, the uh, Mini being driven by Charlie Cooper and his teammates, the new JCW F66. They came first in class. And then Misha, um, he actually qualified, their, they qualified their car first in class. They were running second in class when all the flop fog came down and so on. And they basically neutralized the race. They, they finished the race under a safety car and, and it, it didn't, it didn't fit go um, full distance, which is a huge, huge shame. But I have an announcement. Yesterday was a kind of special day. I just talked about the N24. I went to the N24 in the new F66 Mini Cooper S. And we arrived back from the N24 on Monday, and yesterday, Tuesday, uh, was actually my birthday, and Mini came to pick up the F66 Cooper S and gave me a bit of a birthday present. Let's see what happened yesterday. Now then, today just happens to be my birthday, and the guys from Mini have come to pick up the little Cooper S that I drove to the N24 
but the big truck that's just arrived outside has a present for me and it's a really special one. Now then, what do we have here? Birthday present from Mini. What could it possibly be? Oh yes, it is. A Countryman a JCW in legend grey, similar spec to the Mini Cooper that's going back. But this is my new Mini long termer. Unbelievably, I've got this car for the next six months to really put it to the test, to really find out just how good it is. I am so excited, cannot wait. Just look at this. Look at the calipers on that. So we get it unstrapped and then we can get it off the truck. Very smart. Very smart indeed. Here it comes. Quad pipes at the back. Full JCW, 300 horsepower. Just the coolest looking thing. Four wheel drive. Welcome to my new long-termer. What a thing. What that does mean though is sadly the little Cooper S has got to go back to Mini. I've loved my time with this car. Well over a thousand miles in a very short space of time. Really put it through its paces. Lots of motorway cruising. 149 miles an hour we hit in this car on the Autobahn. And I just think the new F66 is an absolutely cracking car, but the same spec as my new Countryman Legend Grey with red roof, mirror caps, wicked. Absolutely wicked. But yeah, sadly, this one's going back to Farnborough. But don't worry, because the Countryman's here to stay. So let me briefly walk you around my new long term. And now you've hopefully seen my review of the Countryman JCW, a car that impressed me a great deal. I know it's not really a Mini anymore. They are a big car, but they drive very much like a Mini. On the interior, the interior is a hugely familiar place because it's very, very similar to the F66 that I've just got out of. Similar central display, uh, similar materials being used, the same steering wheel, the same seats. It's a stunning, stunning cabin and one I've spent a lot of time in over the last few days. But then the space in the back is significantly more than you would find in the little mini hatch. And then for the pups and bikes and just general practicality, all the things I really want to put this car to the test and try out, it's got a really good sized boot. So yeah, um, very, very cool to have this car and really get to grips with it, get to really understand it. I think that's what having long-term cars is all about. So first up, a massive thanks to Mini UK for uh, giving me this car for the next six months. Uh, any ideas for content, any questions you have, any tests you'd like me to put it through, please you know, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best. But yeah, really very, very cool. So yes, what a birthday present that is. So yes, my new long-termer is the Countryman JCW. I've known about that for a while. Since I went and did the press drives of the Countryman JCW, I cannot wait to spend the next six months with that car. I'm gonna try and put it through its paces and do lots of things with bikes and dogs and uh, Tracy and, and, and going away and holidays and just really understand that as a family car, but very, very exciting. Um, and I'll still be running my Handy Group long term as, as well. There's a new one of those coming very, very soon. So stay tuned to the channel for that one. Um, you might well be here in the background, I can hear um, saws and drills and so on. The garage build is coming along really well. We've had huge progress today. Something massive has gone in today. 
Um, but the first two episodes of the Garage Build have gone down so well. Uh, some massively positive comments. Everyone's really enjoying it. I'm trying to do my best to cover as much of the build as possible to cover up your questions as well. You're asking questions about why we've done certain things or what our plans are. Um, so I'm trying to, to really bring you behind the, the build of my dream garage. Um, it's gonna be very, very special. Yesterday, by the way, just one, my Porsche passed its MOT. Didn't really think it wouldn't do, but I've got a drive tour coming up in a couple of weeks time and it will be the Porsche I'm taking. So I'm quite glad that the MOT is done and we can start looking forward to that. And then finally, this Friday at six, my next video will be me driving to the N24 in the F66 Cooper S um, and taking you behind the scenes, the grid walk, we meet Misha, we meet Charlie Cooper, and I may well have done quite a fast speed on the Autobahn on the way there, and then was annoyed because I reckoned it could go faster, so on the way back, I did even faster. <laughs> Great car. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I've got plenty to do today. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll put in the comments below what you think about my new long-termer, um, any questions about the garage build, but for now, I'm going to love you and leave you. If you enjoyed that, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Patreon for plenty more content to come.